I became a manager because my eyesight had deteriorated and I could hardly see the football clearly. So I tried contact lenses, they didn't seem to work. So I decided to pack up playing football and then one of the existing managers said, would you like to take a team for us? And I remember went on the underground from Whitechapel up to northwest London somewhere with these 11 boys who I, I, I didn't know from Adam. But we got on very well and I came back and I thought, I, I enjoy this. So I started taking a team every week. And then all of a sudden this chap appeared before me, who apparently was the chairman of the managers, and he said, um, you've got to come and be elected as a manager. And I said, well, I don't really want to be a manager. Why have I got to be a manager? He said, well, you can't keep taking a team if you're not a manager. So I didn't want to argue. So I said, OK. So I went to the next manager's meeting. They gave me the club tie and Julie elected me a manager. I, I want to know, if your eyesight was beginning to fail, is that why you made me team captain? Is that because you no, couldn't see no, what because, was going on? No, because when I was a manager, I was able to wear glasses. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> while I was playing, it was a bit difficult. Because yeah. <laughs> at that stage, there were only glass lenses. Um, no, so I was, I must have been about uh, 22, 20, something like that. Yeah, 22. And I became a manager at the age of 22, and I'm still a manager today. <laughs> I think maybe you're lying about your age. I think maybe you were 24, 24, yeah, 24. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, Paul. Yeah. To start with, I was in charge of three football teams because the club had six teams ignoring the old boys. That was three teams between the age of 13 and 16, and there were three teams between the age of 16 and 19. Paul was in the 13 to 16 age group, and because I was the new manager, they put me in charge of the juniors. So I had three teams. I was able to call on a couple of people, because for I couldn't go with three teams who kicked off at the same time at different venues. And I, I gradually I took over the A team. At that stage, they were only an established 11, I would say. There were no substitutions in those days. Very quickly I determined I need to change the captain, and I did. I spoke to uh, the existing captain, and he didn't seem to mind, and I then decided I wanted Paul to be the captain, so I appointed him captain. To do with football, we stayed together for six years virtually, all through 13 to 16 and all through 16 to 19. Oh, it could be difficult at times. As, as, a, as a old, once we got into the, uh, the the 16 to 19, and that was obviously a, a bit more mature. I remember Dennis saying to me, because yeah, we played on a Sunday, he said, don't shave over the weekend, he said, because if you come in on a Sunday and you've got a bit of growth, he says, you look a bit more fierce. He says, well, scare the opposition. Um, but, yeah, Dennis was there to, uh, um, to, to run the team. And as, as we got older... Um, he obviously had a reasonable amount of faith in me because I, as we went up into the 16 to 19 team, uh, before long I was in the A team of the, the older groups, so playing with, with boys a bit older than me. There was a, a stage that I suppose it must have been probably 16, 17, when the, after, at the end of the club evening, the club managers used to go out and they'd, they'd go out to the West End for a coffee. And Dennis said to Yvonne and myself, he said, we're going out for a coffee, do you want to come out with us one evening? And so we went out, Dennis drove us up there in the car and we were the other managers, um, we were still club members. But that was probably the first time, you probably don't remember, probably the first time that we'd been out into the West End in the evening having a coffee, acting like grown-ups. And that was all part and parcel of the, the, um, the influence 
that the older members and the managers had on the, the younger ones helped us all to, to grow up and experience the things that we, were, um, we weren't expected to experience at that age, I guess. Well, some managers were quite a bit older. Um, I never had a problem communicating with the, with the boys. I never had a problem but at all. I think it was always good to have a, 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 a male role model who's a bit older than you, who, as you say, you could look, look up to. Um, that they weren't your peers, but they weren't far past your peers in age. Um, and, uh, yeah, you could build a relationship, which was different to a, a teacher relationship. Um, <laughs> it, it was... Um, uh, a, a, what's the word? A disinterested older adult. <laughs> no, there's a big, there's a big thing. I've, always, I've thought about that quite often. You had a child and a parent. The parent is supposed to teach you to grow up, to be, have manners, and how to eat with a knife and fork, etc., etc. Then you had a school teacher, and a school teacher was there for discipline and education. So there's something missing in the middle. And what's missing is a manager. Because the manager was the social interaction for children. Uh, he didn't have a formal position. Um, he, he wasn't there particularly to do anything specific. But a good manager built relationships with the members he was responsible for. And um, it was easy for me, I don't know about other managers, it was easy for me, because my I had an interest in sport. So when I was dealing with a sporting team, we had a common interest. We could just talk about the same things. The one thing that I think I did, I don't know if Paul agree, but the one thing I did I insisted on discipline and on a couple of occasions, um, well one in particular, I had to uh, expel a boy from the club. Uh, I won't go into the detail now but I had to do that. I didn't want to but I had to and it was done. Uh, and there were several other things that happened where I had to make a decision and I did. And I think the boys, after a while, understood that and that established the relationship between myself and the members. Yeah. I don't know what other managers did, I really don't, but that's how I operated. Uh, to me the club sorry, to me the club is you were a member of the club and at all times the club's name had to be respected and you had to obey the rules of the membership of that club. And that's what I abided by all the time. I, I think that one of the things is you talk about the parents having um, a role and the teachers having a role and they have authority by right but the role of the club manager was that they, they had authority that, but that was by agreement with the, the, the members. Um, the, it wasn't a, a God-given right and they didn't have um, uh, the, uh, the ability to um, make decisions that you didn't agree with. You had the opportunity to, to disagree, walk away if necessary. But as long as those decisions and the authority that you gave them was uh, um, handled fairly, I think you, that's how the managers earn the respect of the, the members. I enjoyed working with Paul. In fact, I enjoyed, I think it's fair comment to say, that I cannot actually remember a member that um, I did not uh, enjoy working alongside. Uh, I, I did not dislike any, uh, I can't remember disliking any member uh, at all. I just can't remember that. Um, no, we, I think it's fair to say that all the boys and there were, what, three teams, 33 boys, and there was always a few extra, so maybe 35, 36 boys. And uh, I never... I never had any difficulty with any of them. I never disliked any of them. And years later, whenever I met any of them, 
It was always a friendly relationship, you know. But it wasn't just the 33 boys, was it? Because some would move up. Yeah. And another 11 would come yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So it would, it would yeah, be yes. more than that. That's quite but right. But as far as, um, you know, the, the, the two of us, I mean, it's, uh, you know, um, more than 50 years and we're still talking to each other. <laughs>